That he is, Bart. Yes. Bartholomew. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what up? Oh my God. Oh, what's hey. what's up? What's going are you on? in a hotel? Uh, what kind of mahogany my, you got in there? No, I'm in my house, man. Who are you talking about? Oh, uh, you know what? That's that money. <laughs> <laughs> that money. Hey, I, I I made a little bit of it. I made a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, right. Bit. Don't don't start that, dog. What year is this for you, Dad? Fourteen. Just God, that. <laughs> crazy, right? Man, it's it's wild. It's wild. Hey, Road Trippin' fam. We are excited to let you know that Road Trippin' is proud to be presented by FanDuel. Never played NBA Daily Fantasy on FanDuel before? Well, check this out. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Why should you play on FanDuel NBA? Well, for one, it is easy to use when it comes to their app. What's not to love about that? But also, for example, they offer different and unique contests across sports in relation to your skill level. Oh yeah, and get this, you can play for big prizes, single game contests for the biggest national matches, and enter contests for as low as five cents. That's right, five cents. Simply incredible. So again, let's recap. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Enter URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping to play now and get your deposit bonus. That's URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping so they know we sent you. FanDuel, more ways to win. Hey, road tripping fam. Have you heard of FitBod? FitBod creates a fitness program that continually adapts with new exercises and dynamic intensity that adjusts to how you're progressing. So you'll be challenged to meet your goals at your own pace. No workout is one size fits all. FitBod creates a fitness program that continually adapts to you. So you stay challenged with new exercises, pacing, and intensity based on where you are and where you want to be. As a former athlete, I tend to get bored easily and also lack a full body workout if not trained by a professional. With FitBod, I feel like they consistently keep things new and fresh, as well as target all muscle groups to maximize your full potential at getting stronger. Whether you're exercising three days a week, twice a day, Every workout is scientifically proven to be better than last. No equipment? No worries. FitBod has bodyweight routines for those looking to get fit at home or on the go. FitBod is super easy to use and even has HD video tutorials to make learning new exercises a breeze. Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBod today, and your future self will thank you. Get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me backslash roadtrippin'. That's 25% off at fitbod.me backslash road tripping. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome into this edition of Road Tripping presented by FanDuel. I'm your host, Allie Clifton, alongside Channing Fry, Richard Jefferson, and our guest today. Wow, we're going to get into it all um, because we struggled to just get started. He's a 14-year NBA vet, just finished his 14th season with the Chicago Bulls. It's Thad Young. And before we dive in, hello, Thad, to you. Fun fact. Dad and I are 88 babies. Shout out oh, to okay. the 80s. Same age. Okay. We were born in 88. But you, Thad, and Richard share a birthday. Oh, shit. Oh, Happy oh, June wow. 21st. June 21st. Yes. It's a great birthday, isn't it? It's a hell of a like, birthday. It's a great birthday. Middle of the summer, halfway, halfway. Right next, right next to Father's Day. Right next to Father's <laughs> Day. Like halfway away from Christmas. So you get, you know, every six months, you get a little yep. celebration. Be Perfect timing. Time. Perfect timing. And it's Wait like your day, your birthday, your birthday is the first day of summer. You tell people that they just get excited about it. Though. It's fucking great. Is it All really day, cool every day. to like have a birthday on Father's Day, especially because you guys are both fathers? You get no. kind of cheated out. No. no, no, you don't want. No, it sucks. No, no. Yeah, that's terrible. It is. It, terrible. It, it, it sucks. Like, yeah, I, I, I like multiple gifts, so. Like it's definitely terrible. <laughs> no, it, it's terrible because, like, like Thad, you know this, man. It be it, like everybody wants it to be like an extravaganza. It's like it's your birthday and it's Father's Day, and we're gonna. It's just like yo, yo, I need to yeah, chill. Just chill. Let's just, <laughs> just chill. No, there are when it's back to back because sometimes it does fall where it's like Father's Day one day and then the next day is your birthday. So it's like you're like guys, I get it. This is fun, but like let, let's keep it low key. For no sure. Care, I think. Dad, what's Dad, going on in your world right now? You guys were two games out of the play-in game. Okay. We, yeah, that, it's yeah, a big deal that. now. <laughs> not, no, at one point Stop in time, it. they were out. Did you guys get as high as, what, sixth? 
with maybe like 25 yeah, I, games ago. Yeah, I think we were like six or whatever. But yeah. I mean, we all still had terrible records at that time. <laughs> <laughs> you were okay down the stretch. Were you guys? You were still playing for and hoping for that opportunity, right? Yeah, I mean, down the stretch, but you know, when you uh you start, you take everything out of your hands when you know you don't win games. I think that was the, the toughest part. Like we had the pieces and we had the team that can actually go out there and win. It's just a matter of just, you know, us, you know, gelling together. But, you know, no excuses. You know, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. You know, so it is what it is. We're sitting this, at this, home. This ain't that type of podcast. We don't we don't no, we don't we don't, we don't we don't we don't we don't care Listen, about the here, political. Here's an yeah. honest question. <laughs> how are you I this is a that. compliment also how are you still in the league you don't fit <laughs> into a like a, into a mold of anything you're not a three you're not a four you're not out there jacking up threes that's you're the reason the most, why <laughs> right, <you're not> the <laughs> most, like you you every in between of all those that's you and it's just like i remember when you first got in the league you can't scout you because they're like, okay, he's going hard left. And then they play that left hand. And next thing you know, you do some little scoop de scoop shot going left. You're like, man, shit. Hey, coach goes, don't let him go left. I go, coach, I'm like, he's behind the backboard going left. I like, how do <laughs> how did your game evolve like that? And how did you, when did you say, okay, I can't fit into a mold. I just gotta be me. Uh, I mean, I think that kind of started like at the beginning of my career. Um, just, just saying, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to be on the court. Um, when I first started in the league, I didn't play like the first 16, 17 games. But I was the 12th pick. I was like, shit, I'm supposed to be playing. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what the hell? You were in Philly, so I, right? Yeah, I was Philly, in Philly. Yeah. So I go to I go to Mo Cheeks. I'm like, yo, why am I playing? He's like, look, you're going to play some games. You're not going to play some games. So they were playing Jason Smith in front of me. Yeah. And he was like the 20-something pick. And I'm like, man, fuck this. I was like, so I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, I was like, I'm about to tell coach, man, look, at the end of the season, you're going to be starting me. So... <laughs> So I was like, fuck it, I told him. And then he was like, you're going to have to show me. So, like, one game, we played Portland. This one Portland had Brandon uh, – had uh, – Brandon Roy. Had, uh, Brandon Roy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I remember you barbecued yeah, all those, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and we uh, we actually, like – we we were down 20, like, 25 points. And then we came back with me playing, like, a small ball, a small ball four. And I was guarding the Marcus, and I had a pretty good game against him. So, ever since then, I haven't started. So, I was like, fuck it, I ain't going back. But then <laughs> – I'm not going then, back. Yeah, but then shit, I get I get to like my 34th year, and then shit, Doug was like, "Hey, I need you to come off the bench." And I'm like, "No, fuck that!" Like I ain't trying to come off the bench. <laughs> and he was like, I, "He was like, I promise you, if you come off the bench, you're gonna get paid." So I was like, "All right, fuck it." So I came off the bench, became like the sixth man, and yeah. and then I just kind of learned how to play in between and just do everything. Like, and I realized like throughout my course of my career, I could be like a really good intangible guy that can do every single thing pretty good, but not overly great, but it's still enough to help the team win. Like I'm, I'm like that, that person in between that's going to help everybody become on the court. Like they come and force. Yeah. Back to being your teammate. Like let's stop being humble. Your teammate this year called you the MVP of your team in season 14 because of two Channing's point, like what you can bring to the table, all of the little things. Yeah, I mean, Zach is like little brother to me. Um, I had him as a rookie um, in Minnesota. So, you know, we we spent a lot of time together just talking and me helping him, like, you know, figure out situations on the court. But um, this year, you know, um, you know I, I, I thank Zach for that. But, you know, um, I just try to go out there and just play, just make sure that I'm, I'm doing everything in the locker room to help these young guys because, you know, like we were just talking about before the podcast started, like, you know, a lot of the young guys, they don't actually know how to play. So they, they're in the process of learning how to actually play this NBA game and the ball is just being rolled out and they're going through their bumps and bruises. So I'm I'm like that common force to kind of help them through them bumps and bruises. Like we had a really good rookie this year. Uh, you know, I think he's going to be a stud, uh, Patrick Williams. Yeah. He did a hell of a job this year. But, you know, he have games where he gets lost. So like at the end of the season, like I spent a lot of time like molding him and trying to tell him like, look, when Zach and Booch don't play, this is your fucking team. Like, like you need to go out there and you need to like show. So I'm like, I'm breaking off plays and shit, running him into the post, like doing all types of shit to, to get him going to make sure like he knows like you're the man or you're going to be the man. You're going to have to hold this franchise now. So like just getting guys to understand where their roles are and how they kind of fit in. Like, I know I'm like, 
you know, I'm past the prime of my career, but I can still play at a high level. But it's my job to go out there and help these guys along the way as, as well as going out there and doing the things I need to do for myself. No, that meant, dude, that's so, that's so well said, but like, okay. So, because I love the role because me, I got, got to that role where it was like, I was a rookie and I came off the bench and I was like, I need to be a starter. And then I started and then back to the bench role. Then it goes back to the vet role. And it's like, when right. did you realize that? And like, when did you realize, oh, okay. Now say that when did you realize, when did you realize that in order for me to play as long as you have that you needed to take on another role. This wasn't just about how many points I score, how many rebounds I get, but it's about what I can contribute off the court, what I can contribute like as a veteran and as a mentor. Like when did you kind of start to figure that out? Because those are the individuals that have the longest careers, not just guys that just play. Like, yeah, there's a LeBron's, Chris Paul's, but the guys that play like Channing, myself, yourself, it's because around like year eight, nine, you're like, I need to be a vet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that vet. It, it definitely. Right. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say probably I, I started to realize a little bit more when I got the indie. Okay. Um, you know, I got the indie and we had so many vets on the team that it was just so many voices. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, when you have so many vo voices, sometimes like one the the main voice gets overshadowed or you know, um everybody's kind of talking over each other, so everybody's not on the same page. So I got to Indy and we had me, Jeff T, Rodney Stuckey, Monte Ellis, CJ Miles. These are all vets. L vets. Jefferson. Nine years. <laughs> yeah, L Jefferson, uh, Aaron Brooks. Like we had a, a Paul George, had a, a veteran team. So it was just like, it was just a lot. And then, you know, we was dealing with Nate as well. I mean, we know we all know how Nate is. So, <laughs> so it was like. Tell us about Nate. Tell us. No, no, because Nate McMillan, obviously, he unceremoniously left Indiana after being successful and dealing with a bunch of injuries, goes to Atlanta, you know, assistant coach really quickly, you know, takes over for Pierce and they vault. And it's so funny because there's like there's two Nate McMillans. There's two Nate McMillans. There's the Nate McMillan is a is a great coach. But then there's also the what the fuck Nate McMillan. Is that the one that Channing, you shared your experience? Yes, Channing, Channing hates yeah, yeah, yeah. him. Channing I don't hate him. him. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me phrase that. Let me phrase that. Let me phrase that. He was a lot of Channing's inspiration for growth <laughs> as a basketball player. <laughs> no, no, no. The league, he wanted me to be something that he knew I wasn't. And so he judged me on that. I'd be like, in practice, I'm shooting threes and my spacing with LaMarcus is great. And he's like, no, no, no. I need you to be Joe Presbilla. And I'm like, I'm not going to get paid this way. The thing about Nate is he establishes culture and, and responsibility for your role very quickly. The yep. thing that gets messed up is once he establishes that, it's hard for him to let go of the reins, right? He wants to practice two and a half hours every single day. <laughs> and there's no, Brandon Roy has a, a knee the size of a, a grapefruit. And he's like, Brandon, I need you to practice it. Brandon's like, if you practice today, I can't play for a week. So you got, and Brandon was just like, dude, we can't do this. But Nate is like this, like a metronome. He doesn't care. <laughs> Win or lose, it's like this. And then it just, there's no communication. Now, I think he's going to have to get better because he's playing with a young team. He's way like better coach. now. Yeah, he's see? Way he's better way better now. now. Like, I had like my, first, my, my first, so, you know, so I played for Indy three years. So my first yeah, yeah. to the second year was was like yeah. astronomical. <laughs> like you, like, like this is a whole different coach. Yeah. <laughs> like, the first year I got there, I was like, oh, we're not going to last. <laughs> it's like, we ain't going to make it. <laughs> we're not, not going to last. It. Like, the way we practicing, the way we go going out, like, we was having, like, two and a half, three hour practice. Just yes. like you said, I was like, I was like oh, shit. Defense. Like, this, this, not like, this fun practice. Crazy. Well, that's, yeah. that's where he earned his money in the league as a player himself, was on that right. end of the floor. Yeah. Right. He averaged, but, listen to the game last night, he averaged, what, like, five points as a player? But no, but Nate McMillan was a good player. Like, the, right. I don't know. Sure. I, I, I watched, I, like, got a chance to watch him play mm -hmm. and remember the 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 Seattle Seahonic, uh Supersonics teams that Seahonics? he was on. I know, right? I messed up. It's the whiskey at 11. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, I remember those teams that he were, was on, and they were, like, defensive-minded. It was the Gary Paytons and the Sean Kemp's yep. and the Detlef Shrimps, and they were just – 
aggressive. Percy yeah, they were aggressive and they were mean and oh, they yeah. bullied the Western Conference to like the best record and they go against MJ and the Bulls. Like if you're the most dominant team in the conference, I feel like they had the best record that year or second best record behind the Bulls. They were nasty. Yeah, they were but nasty. Yeah. Nate McMillan has – Luke Ridnour tells me this story, right? And I'm about to rat out some people, so hear me out. <laughs> uh, here Luke we go, Takashi. Yeah, listen, Takashi. Listen, so uh, Luke Ridnour tells me, he goes, man, Richard, this was years and years ago when he was in Seattle, when uh, Nate was in Seattle. He's like, Richard is so funny. He was like, uh, we had back-to-back – um contact practices and they were like both like two and a half hours long and i don't know if it was ray allen or rashad lewis but one of the vets on the team called the nba yeah and told on him <laughs> they called the nba and told on him it was like the second or third day of practice they called the nba and told on him he luke rittenauer says nate mcmillan comes to practice and is like so apparently we have guys here that don't want to work. <laughs> oh, oh, he, hey, that word. No. Right there, work. Oh, yeah. Oh, the first thing he said, oh, we going to work. Yeah. Every single, every single day. I'd be like, oh, shit. Like, oh, let me go on and get, get my clothes laced up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like no, this is crazy. He's that's what he, goes, he goes, apparently we have guys don't want to work. I, I got a call from the Players Association saying that yep. we're going too hard and doing contact. So obviously – like, but it was like, hey. right? Like, some, one of these vets was like, nah, dude. Cause, okay, back when I first came in as a rookie, probably you two were probably very, very close. You could still have two hour, two practices a day. Both days were contact. And you would typically have two a day Monday, two a day Wednesday or Tuesday, one practice on Wednesday, two a day on Thursday. And then what would the coach say on Friday? If you go hard in the morning practice, you have Friday. <laughs> You have Friday. Oh yeah. Hey, we start. We started off with the conditioning test. So, yo, yes. <laughs> what, we, what are these conditioning tests? What are conditioning? Tests? Monster, monster, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> the, the five by ten. Yeah. Dude, yeah, the five by like, ten and no bank time. What's yeah, five by like, ten? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? Five of All them. That, Five of them. And you five, get, five, five up and backs. Five up yeah, and backs. Five up and backs. Yeah. And then Biggs got a minute and five-ish. Guards yep. had to be under a minute. And then, it, like, let's say I got mine in 103. In Phoenix, if I got mine in 103, you could bank two seconds. So, like, right. if you got really tired, you could have, by the end, you would have five or six extra seconds. So, you wouldn't have to sprint. But to have the best parking spot, you would want to get bank the most time. Obviously, Steve Nash, Grant Hill, and Goron, we're crushing people, banking like 30 seconds. I mean, it was ridiculous. But me, I was like, no, no, no. And no, how many seconds joint, I got left? Joint, I'm walking that last joint. That joint is wild. I'm not even gonna lie. It Aaron hurts. Brooks, Aaron Brooks almost died. Like he couldn't practice for a month <laughs> after that shit. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, this is crazy. And then we practice right after. Like we right go right after. into right into drills. What if like, you fail? Right? You gotta do it again the next day. You gotta do, oh, you gotta do it again. You can't you can't get into training camp until you do it. So and, see, and, and and that's the and that's and again that was the Pat Riley Byron Scott was like this we had this thing called easy oh run. Byron Scott Byron Scott we I had Byron Scott who Byron Scott like my my first year I came in the year before they had like four guys maybe five guys that were injured from how hard training camp was so they went to him and was like dude you can't have your whole roster banged up before training camp ends. So he got better, but I used to like, and, and the best thing about the, the, the conditioning drill is when you become a vet, you start to figure out how to avoid it. So I remember the, like the, the conditioning, uh, like D mill. Cause that was one of the last places. D mill was like, Hey, rich. Uh, he was the trainer in Cleveland and he goes, Hey, rich, we, we got a conditioning drill. So I would show up right after labor day, right? Like everybody show up for that week. Then I'd be like, hey, I got to go back home to get some stuff and finish packing, whatever. Then I would show up two days before practice. So I would show, I would show up the day before. I'd be like, oh, my kids were in school. And you, I'd show up the day before practice so that there was no conditioning drill. Are, and they, I had this feeling. You guys are grown men. You get paid to work out. And like the intimidation, Ellie, the Ellie. like scare. I want to just say this. So Byron okay, Scott, say it, say it, say it. my first year with Cleveland, Byron Scott was the coach. And I remember doing media day, our sit downs and Luke, 
was in his last year. Luke Walton was in his last year in Cleveland. And just like seeing like the sweat drip down his face of what was to come starting with training camp. I'm like, don't you get paid to like do this? Like no. it's really that hard. He was no, like, did you, did, you, did you hear the story of Gronk? Gronk would go and do sprints. Right. But apparently he would change the shirt change the shirt that he was wearing on the same day, but then he would send those videos to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that it looked like he was working out on multiple days, but he was just switching his shirt. And so it looked like it was like different days. And it was like, dude, because at the end of the day, there's a fine balance of knowing your body, knowing your body, knowing who you are. And with all due respect to coaches, sometimes they lose sight in that, right? Like right. back to like D mill D mill. When I first show up year 15, he's doing all these measurements. He's poking and prodding me. And he was like, well, Richard, we got to get the measurements of your quad. If you have a knee injury. And I was just like, D if I, I'm, I'm 35 years old. If I have a knee injury, I'm retiring. I'm done. Like I'm not, do, I'm not rehabbing for seven months to come back for year 16. I'm barely holding on as it is. Leave me the fuck alone. Rich, they were doing that to me my last year. And they were like, Channing, your body fat's pretty high. I was like, what is it? They're like 12. I said, no, 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 that's about right. I'm about business. But you know, I have a few drinks on the side. I'm good. I'll work my way into it. I don't need to be any skinny. I go D mill. I have to guard the biggest guys. I can't be that skinny. I'm like an NBA sumo wrestler. I gotta pack hey, the pounds up. Hey, I do. Hey, during this season, I was like, look, man, if y'all want me to come in this weight room, I said my weights is me having to go out here and push these big motherfuckers around. That's my weight. <laughs> I said, you're not gonna kill me in the weight room. I'm not coming in there. If I am coming in there, it's to get my my body fat, which I ain't got very much. <laughs> and, you were one of the lucky cool. ones. You were one of the lucky ones. <laughs> like me, it was a constant. It was a constant. Oh, yeah. Right. For sure. We know how we're supposed to feel, which is the difference, right? And to get back on that conditioning test, Alan, <laughs> I went to a team. I went to a team, right? So do you know on that five by 10, okay, you get twice the time that it takes you as your break. So if it's 105, you get 210. I played on a team where the guy said, your break is as long as it takes you to run it. So the only three dudes that got it were Victor Oladipo, Tobias Harris, and Kyle O'Quinn. But he had practiced that drill more than almost actually practicing basketball. So look, me and Luke Rittenauer. <laughs> Love Luke Rittenauer. Did you ever play with Luke Rittenauer? Did you ever play with Luke Rittenauer? Uh, that is? Nah, Luke, nah, right. Luke goes, what are, but Luke would condition, Luke would play basketball for hours he would just play full court one-on-one -on -one with anybody right he'd be like this is my condition which i get so coach was like hey you guys aren't in shape luke goes what do you mean i'm not in shape he goes all i do is play basketball i'm in basketball shape he goes forget you i hate this drill so he goes how many days they got to make it and they were like well you got four and so you got to do it four times and luke's like all right so the first day me and luke go out there one two we get two done we look at each other we're like yeah this is it we go, we'll see you tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Booch, as Booch, he got to four and it was like 30 seconds. This dude turns around, barfs on the court. And they're like, ready to go. Blah, run and runs. I said, you know what? That, that's not me. That's not, that's not me. He finishes. No. I said, that ain't it. The last day, me and Luke still are with the trainer. It's Sunday. I bring my son and me and him are just jogging this thing. Like this is the dumbest thing we've ever had to do in our entire career. And this is not going to help us win. It was a <laughs> stupid and we were trash that year. Hey, you know, all we, this conditioning for this trash. Hey, we had to help Al Jefferson get through that motherfucker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, had, we had to help. Oh, I, I, there was no way Al big ass got through that. Never. Hey. We were dragging his big ass through it. Then we had to help Lance Stevenson get through that motherfucker. Like, oh yeah. Well, like, now he's different it was, now. It was he's crazy. different now. And then uh, Evan Turner, when I was in Philly, mm -hmm. he got like halfway through towards like he was like, you know what, this and walked out the gym and went home. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, man, it's, it's it's just these like sometimes, man. No, because there's things that. Like my thing with trainers, every trainer is like, oh, oh, this drill is hard. And it's like, yes, I can create some shit that's fucking hard. You're exactly. talking about the professional athletes, like the best athletes in the world. And we're like, what the?
are we doing here with this? Right. Are you trying to prove a point? Like, like when Scott Skiles, with all due respect, because Scott is a great coach, but great he would coach. be having like tape, oh. tape shoot arounds and shit. Yes. And you're like, I was there in Orlando with him. Yeah. Do you tape, Two tape, hour shoot around. Well, and then, and then like some of these conditioning tests, Scott got mad. Scott got mad because he did these conditioning tests, but we guys started showing up like the day of weren't even in basketball shoes. They were in pure running shoes. He was like, I, I see some guys out here in running shoes, but like, just go put your basketball shoes on. Like, it's not going to be. And it's just like, all right, Scott, you know. But again, Nate Scott, Nate McMillan, Byron Scott, they're all from the same era. These are the same yeah, they, coaches. Yeah, they, they cut from that same cloth. Like, yeah. Right. That's oh, yeah. crazy. But what's That's crazy right. is like Andre Miller failed. Remember, it was like, I, obviously, I live in Portland. Andre Miller did, said, I'm not doing this conditioning test. And they're like, well, how do you stay in shape all summer? He goes, oh, I roller skate. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, yes. no bullshit. Hey, Andre mean? Miller, Andre, people used to tell me all the time when I played with Andre Miller like my first couple of years in Philly, they was like, yo, I seen Andre Miller in Camden at the at the skating ring. I was like, what? The skating <laughs> ring? And he came in one day with his skates over his shoulder, like, yo, after practice, I'm going skating. Like, so we need to hurry this shit up. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like what? <laughs> like roller skates or roller blades? Roller skates, like, like a rink, dude. Roller, roller skates. Like roll yeah. bounce. Yeah. You did that yeah. for yeah. conditioning? Shout out Great wow. Skate. <laughs> oh, Great Skate was hidden back in the yeah, day. Yeah, you remember Great Skate yet? Great yeah, Skate was the roller skate rink. Parties. We used to have all of our junior high dances there, but Great Skate was on the west side. Aww. What were you doing all the way on the west side, Channing? Don't, don't worry about where I moved, dog. I was shaking oh, it on the west side of Phoenix. Yeah. The NBA playoffs are here, and you'll be in hoops heaven betting all the action on FanDuel Sportsbook. There are so many exciting matchups, and FanDuel is taking that excitement to another level because new and existing users, all customers, can bet risk-free throughout the playoffs. Once you have a FanDuel Sportsbook account, you can bet one same-game parlay risk-free every week. That means you can combine multiple bets for an even bigger win. And if you don't win, you'll get up to $10 back. The most intriguing matchup to me looking at the current odds on FanDuel Sportsbook right now, I'd have to say the Clippers coming out of the West at plus 350. Not only have they won two in a row to tie up the series at two all, but with the news regarding the health or lack thereof with Luka Doncic, I'll take the Clippers in those odds. Basketball fans, now is the perfect time to give FanDuel a shot. New users can still get up to $1,000 back if your first bet doesn't win. Just sign up with promo code ROADTRIPPIN to bet the NBA playoffs risk-free. That's code ROADTRIPPIN, exclusively on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Disclaimer, 21 and older and present in New Jersey. Risk-free bet for the first online real money wager only and refund issued at non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Same game parlay refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in seven days. Max refund $10. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Same game parlay available for multiple sports in all states on mobile slash web. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. The right outfit can bring out something special in us. And with Indochino, creating the best look yet could be more affordable than you think. It may have been a while since the last time you had an excuse to dress up, but whenever that next chance is, make the absolute most of it with Indochino. I will say, even though my shopping experience for a loved one of mine happened online, the efficiency, experience, and intimate way in which Indochino's team was, it made our time spent shopping so worth it. My brother not only feels confident, but received exactly the look, fit, and style he had envisioned. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail. Choose everything about your suit from the fabric, lapel, monogram, and statement linings. You can create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. The best part, Indochino suits start at just $3.99 with all customizations included. Shop for your next best look or book a virtual style consultation at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using code ROADTRIPPIN at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O dot com. Promo code ROADTRIPPIN. Hey, ROADTRIPPIN fam. Have you heard of FitBod? FitBod creates a fitness program that continually adapts with new exercises and dynamic intensity that adjusts to how you're progressing. So you'll be challenged to meet your goals at your own pace. 
No workout is one size fits all. FitBot creates a fitness program that continually adapts to you so you stay challenged with new exercises, pacing, and intensity based on where you are and where you want to be. As a former athlete, I tend to get bored easily and also lack a full body workout if not trained by a professional. With FitBot, I feel like they consistently keep things new and fresh as well as target all muscle groups to maximize your full potential at getting stronger. Whether you're exercising three days a week, twice a day, Every workout is scientifically proven to be better than last. No equipment? No worries. FitBot has bodyweight routines for those looking to get fit at home or on the go. FitBot is super easy to use and even has HD video tutorials to make learning new exercises a breeze. Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBot today, and your future self will thank you. Get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me backslash roadtrippin'. That's 25% off at fitbod.me backslash road tripping. Wait, Thad, we talked about some crazy teammates, okay? So let's talk about, number one, you, the best teammate you think you've ever had in pure talent, and then talk about the funniest yet slash craziest teammate you've ever had. I always like those two things. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. So I'm you had pick one teammate. Who was the funniest? Who was the funniest? Yeah, funniest? One of the funniest teammates I ever had was... Uh... I'm probably gonna say uh, Kyle O'Quinn. Yeah, he is so funny. Kyle, he's hey, the Kyle funniest is... dude of all time. <laughs> Kyle's funny as <laughs> man. He's he's probably one of the funny. Yeah, he's like he like he'd be on the end of the bench, like, and he'd be like, "Look, all I need is seven minutes, and I'm good. Like, <laughs> I'll be good for the game." Then, like, somebody get in foul trouble, he'd be like, "You." Yeah. KO down here. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, yo, I was like, this dude is wild. Hey, he, like, he would do that like, in Orlando. Yo, he seems like, you know, a dude, I like, I believe you guys because I've never played with him, but like, I would see his interactions with people or I would just say oh. it's up to him in passing and he seemed funny as shit, right? <laughs> like, he seemed funny, but like, he can't jump. He can't really move. But like, he can block shots. But he knows yes. how to block shots. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like he Huge just answers. like this. Old, he got this old man game. He got this old man game. So when you see him with a beard in the old man game, it's just just he, it just hey, makes he, me laugh. He, he like hey, he be like one thing I can do. He said I can block some shots. I can rebound. And he said I got this midi twerking every time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this dude is, hey, he is so funny, man. He so funny. All hey, K KO one time was getting frustrated because our starting lineups were crazy in Orlando. And then they were trying to figure out times between Aaron Gordon, myself, Vooch, him, Dwayne Dedman. So all those guys are just trying to figure out time, whatever. And I was just like, okay, I see what the writing's on the wall here. I'm just here to be the scapegoat, right? So KO one time was mad and they were like, KO, you're supposed to be the bottom man. So all day in practice, KO is yelling, I'm the bottom man. I'm the bottom man. <laughs> hey, that is that like, is him all so day. So loud. <laughs> Who's the bottom man? Who's the bottom man? <laughs> I'll be it. I'll be it. Like I'm on the side. Like I'm sweating right now because I remember it was supposed to be said we had lost a grip in a row. So already people was hot, right? And, and KO's just like, we're doing this drill. And you know, just a shell drill. KO's like, who's the bottom man? Who's the bottom man? I'm the bottom man? I'm the bottom man? Yeah. And, and the worst the, the worst part about playing with Channing or myself is that if we find some shit funny, we ain't hiding oh, it. We ain't there's hiding no it. Hide to get. Like our, there's our, no hiding it. <laughs> yeah, and then everyone starts looking at me or him and just being That's like, funny. I'm like, that oh, shit's funny. I'm sorry. It's so funny. It's, oh, him, I laugh at the worst him, things. Between him and Lance Stevenson, yeah, them too fine, too fine. But yeah, obviously enough people know shit about Lance Stevenson that <laughs> right. he's got to be funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that that's so. Good one. So the best teammate, like if you had to pick one guy to go one on one versus the rest of the league that was your teammate, who would that be? Like pure shit. talent, that dude just a bucket getter. I mean, shit, I, I play with him now, Zach. Like yeah. Zach is Zach is uh, like phenomenal yeah. score like like he different like you like there's no stopping from scoring he gonna get it 2025 20, like i think like for him it's just a matter of taking that next step defensively he got to become a two-way player he's working at it becoming a two-way player billy's pushing him i'm pushing him so like but as far as like scoring bucket for bucket oh he he can get to it yeah and <laughs> and make him at a high rate like a high clip 
Like, like he'll get once he get going, he ain't seeing nothing but the oh, rim. No, that's it. Like, yeah. it's, like it's crazy. <laughs> like, you'd be like, oh my god. Like we, I'd be sitting there, like, you know, you know, I'm old and shit. So now I, I, I go, I might slide to the back and go, like, try to get a little, little warm up in before I check in and shit. So I'm leave, and he got like five, and then I come back at twenty. You like, god damn, like. <laughs> <laughs> She was like five, like four, four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, who was the vet, man? Because now obviously what you, like what, what people un, don't understand about our league is that you don't learn how to be a vet from being in the league. That's one part of it. Learning how to be a vet from being in the league and seeing a lot. That's one part of it. The other part is you learn how to be a vet because you were around a vet. Right. And you were like, okay, see, this is how OGs move, right? Like they look out for people. They make sure guys, you know, they give them a little wisdom. Don't spend your money here. Don't do that. Save your dollars, you know, take care of your chicken, you know, but who was your, who was, who was your vet that you look back on and you were like, man, he really sped up my process probably about two, three years. Man, honestly, it can be more than one. Yeah. I I play with so many of them like shit, like, I play with Kevin Ollie. I play with uh, Theo Ratliff, Danielle Marshall. You um, old as shit, dog. Man, yeah. God damn. No, we are. We're 33. <laughs> no, like, yeah, like, no, but I'm talking about when you think about that, the names he just said, those, like, Kevin, did he, uh, who did you say? Uh, Kevin, not, not what? Did you say Kevin Willis? Ollie. No, Kevin Ollie. Kevin Ollie. No, who else did you say? Uh, Danielle Marshall, Theo Ratliff. Theo Ratliff. Um, Theo you're, Ratliff. You're a one and done, aren't you? Theo, Theo Ratliff yeah. came yeah. in he, in the he, 80s. Yeah, he's a one and done. So he came straight. Theo Ratliff played in 89. <laughs> hey, let me oh tell you God. this. Wait a second. Theo he played Ratliff in 89 a, and he was your vet? I was I was one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. Nah, right. Theo Ratliff. Wait, when did Theo Ratliff come in the league, though? Real talk. Theo yeah, I was Ratliff about to say, like, best, like uh, contract know, years of any player I've ever I'm seen Googling. in my life. He's on Google. Theo Ratliff would average six blocks on his contract year, and other than that, man. keep it on chill mode. Hey, he, hey, no bullshit. He was still blocking shots with two hands on the two hands on the backboard and shit when he was playing. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was like, God damn. Right on, uh, right on. Oh, Elton Brand was uh, probably the one oh. that kind of speeded up my process, though. So he was a beast. Nobody talks about him enough. Like he's my guy, a man. Monster, man. That's he came in. So I lied. He came blood. in in '95. I was gonna right. say that's, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> I said '89. <laughs> but he, was, he played at Wyoming. He was in Wy. He was at Wyoming in 1991. That is who wow. that young played with. He was in college in '91. He was a freshman. And you're playing. Right. You're like, oh yeah. Dude, so I one of my Grant vets. Hill. Grant Hill was in college at '89. Geez, was he really? I wasn't he. Google every, every time. Every time you talk about Grant Hill, Channing, I think it's so cool. And then, like the other day when he was doing that game and he shouted you out, because yeah. I just I feel like it's such a like to your point, like so many years between, yet you played with like one of. But that's the. I mean, but he went I, to I, college nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety four. Yeah. So old. Grant Grant was the man. Grant yeah. was like the guy for me who was like. All right, Channing, that's not going to work. This is, you can do this. We got to do this. Hey, if I'm here at eight, you don't have to be here at eight, but you got to be here at 8 15, right? Like, <laughs> because, like, I got stuff I got to take care of. I go first, and then you get to do you. But then he was also like, man, you got to enjoy this. Like, he had come through his injuries and just taking care of your body. And then everything he was doing on the side, like, Grant has so many little things that people don't even know. He has the largest collection Art of collection. Uh, Af- yeah, crazy. He's now head of USA Basketball. He's part owner of the Hawks. He's, you know, he has his own um, uh, venture funds. He's doing like, so I was just trying to pick his brain. And just over the years, I literally text him. I was like, dude, you are trash on TV. And so that's what gave me a shout out. And I was like, why are you checking your phone on the air? But like, I think it's, it, it does as players, when you have vets who also have the ear of the coach, mm-hmm. right? Things go better. Like if the vet can say, hey coach, we need a day, like we need the guys to go to dinner together. We need to do this. Or he says, hey coach, F all these drills. We need to just go hoop. Like Steve and Grant were those guys, same with Jason Richardson. And Amari yep. shockingly was the oh, guy who was like- Oh yeah, I played with Jason Richardson too. Great vet. Yes, great, great vet. vet. 
Yeah. Can I ask you all this question? Because we've heard Shaq talk about it and you guys have talked about a variety of coaches already just on this podcast. Thad, really quick. Did you play with Hoiberg too in Chicago? No. Okay. So you uh, had I, had, I came in, in right, after, right after he left. Right after that. Okay. Um, what makes in your eyes, all of you, a great NBA coach? And, and I ask this because I don't want you to go into like, it depends on who your team is and but from that, but just like, what makes. Cause that was the same. Yeah. That literally the shit I was going to say, like, depends on who your team is. And but really, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think it does, man, because like yeah. coaches, coaching is so situational. Right. And it's like, you can't compare Greg Popovich to Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson, with all due respect, never really developed players. That wasn't his thing. Like he developed greatness, but he didn't right. like draft a guy that you saw turn into a Manu Ginobili. He didn't draft a guy that you saw turn into a Tony Parker. He didn't draft a guy that you saw turn into a Kawhi Leonard. That's a very different coach mm -hmm. than it is to be like, I got Michael Jordan. I got uh scotty pippen i got dennis rodman but i gotta mentally figure out how to bring these guys together those are so i guess that's my point like is yeah. it one that's willing to listen to the players is it one that can balance knowing that they are the coach yet will take into account their you know what i'm I th saying i think i think they gotta have like a coach has to have that fine line between the players the front office and you know because obviously the front office is asking cer certain things as well like oh we like we got young guys like we need to see how they going how they going they going to develop and how they going to play throughout the course of games and so now you got to figure out how to put those guys into the game without losing the game <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it so it's now it's like it's like you there's a reason have a why the, and there's a reason why the warriors went ham once Wiseman got hurt and that's not a disrespect to Wiseman but once they no longer kind of decided to play him and they went all small ball they kind of took off because it was like that fine balance of like we got to play Wiseman because this dude can go but he doesn't mm -hmm. really fit the mold of Steph and like Dre and right. so he only when played he 45 games in his entirety of basketball <laughs> college high school and, and the pros it's a fact yeah. He's played less than 50 games total. So, like, the way his brain is moving, he's thinking, oh, I should be on the nail, while Draymond's like, oh, they're just running this loop to reverse counter, you know? Like, okay, right. so, like, he's thinking, hands up, who's this guy? And everyone else on that team is like, boom, 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 boom. He's thinking, like, his processor needs to – he got to watch so much film and slow the game down. That's why they need to play fast. So that's right. on Steve right. Kerr, though, to make that decision. Well, sometimes it's management telling you, you got to play the yeah, young guys I'm like that. Right knows that James all Wiseman is nice. James Wiseman, this is not a disrespect James to James Wiseman. Wiseman. No. Nice. no, that motherfucker can hoop. He can go. <laughs> he can go. <laughs> and he yeah. don't even know what he's doing at that. He's just like, yeah. athleticism. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I feel about Patrick Williams on our team. Like, yeah. they, with the four pick, they stole him one. Like, I don't know how you seen this motherfucker at Florida State coming off the bench <laughs> playing <laughs> limited yeah. minutes to get him to the league and him doing with the, some of the shit that he does. Like some of the shit that he does, like he thinks he's just doing it. And we like, this shit is amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like well, that's crazy. Yeah. speed. And I would say, I would say thing in the NBA. Yeah. Coaches, so I, I would say basketball. coaches Ali are like great players. The way Michael Jordan dominated versus the way Larry Bird dominated versus the way Magic Johnson dominated, the way LeBron dominated. They're all great. They just do it in different ways or they have special skills or special attributes. Some know how to relate to players. Some know how to develop players. Some know, like, I think T. Lou is a very good manager of talent, yeah. right? Like T. Lou can talk to Braun and he knows his basketball IQ and he can get these guys together where other, like, I wouldn't consider T. Lou at this point in time, a high level development guy because he's never had a group like the Chicago Bulls. Or, you know, remember David Blatt, they brought in David Blatt to coach Kyrie, Tristan, and all the young dudes and Andrew Wiggins. Then Braun's like, I'm coming home, I'm coming <laughs> back, I'm coming. And all of a sudden there was like, all right, well, Mr. Blatt, we appreciate your service here, but like, we're going to go a different route. And that's like, not to say that the man can't coach, but when it came to, we went from, we're going to develop our young top five picks, three of them to, oh no, we need to win a championship. That's a completely different skill set. Yeah. You know?
And so I, th I think for me in coaching, it's like the biggest thing is, does the coach have the ear? Like, is the coach going to adjust his system or develop guys within his system so that people can believe in it? Do they feel like they have a chance to get better? So like Thibs didn't work in Minnesota because he's like, I need you guys to play my style. And they were like, dude, we've been all-stars. Like, we're not playing that way. I'm going to get these minutes regardless, even if I suck on defense. And it just didn't work out. <laughs> Jimmy Butler went to Miami. Tibbs goes to New York, and those dudes are hungry. Say, so like, hey, we believe in whatever you think. Hey, Julius Randle, you want to shoot? Guess what? You can shoot every single time. We don't care. And that's how we're going to build around. So Tibbs goes, if you want to get that, all you have to do is play good defense. So the communication between the coach, your 15th, and your first guy has to be a straight line. Right. And why do you think Spolstra works in Miami? Now, obviously, this year they're a little tired, they're a little beat up. And I just think they just don't have enough talent this year. But Spolstra can say to Jimmy Butler, you're bullshitting. Or he could say, Jimmy, go ahead. You can coach because basically you and I are speaking the same language. I shouldn't have to coach effort or coach little things. I should, co I should be able to manage the game. And yeah, when a right. coach can become a manager, then he's really hit that next step. Like Rick Carlisle is a manager. He yeah. manages the game, yeah. right? Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Nate what does. Has. That's, that's yeah. what Nate does. Nate's a, a, a really good micromanager. Like, like yeah. when you see teams, all the teams that he's had at the end of games, like they micromanage games because he knows how to like slow the game down and get For guys sure. to kind of play under control as opposed to just, I'm going to just let y'all go. Yeah. And yeah. that's why that's why we were good at Indy. I mean, like we, oh, we just I hated those teams. <laughs> we played hard defensively. We had a lot of dolls that, that knew how to go out there and play together. And then we we knew how to manage games at the end. Now, obviously, we ran into, like, Cleveland them, them, them two years or whatever, and then Boston. Ooh, was a big, did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, barbecue chicken. I mean, goddamn, y'all got Bron. What the fuck? Come on. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, guess what? Like, real remember, good. We were oh, my God. God we were that, oh, my God. That's amazing. Was, the problem was. Let's not forget. Had, my team didn't have two of me. Because if I, if I was out there guarding, it would have been a little different. I don't know if he would have got 40. Oh, my God. You guys were up 22. He would have got, 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 got like 36. You were up 22. He would have got like oh, 30. Guess what? They put the, not 40. Put the he would have got like 30. In. Hey, but hey. He but put the thing, snipers one thing, in. One thing, one, thing, one thing for sure. My matchup was my matchup was straight. I took care of my matchup. Who was your Who's matchup? Who was your matchup? Kev? Kevin. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! Come on, man. He's averaging. He was averaging what, nineteen, twenty? No, 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 no. I'm not saying. I'm not. What I'm trying to say this is that. No, Thad, you're right. You're right. No, that that this this is what I want to try to say. Yes, Kevin's our guy. No, 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 no. This is not a knock. This is this is not a knock. Because look, Kevin is like Kevin is very good, multi-time All Star. Everybody understands this. But this is right. the thing. Kevin Love against you, we know we got to give Kevin some help. Kevin versus Paul Millsap or Al Horford, it's like, Kevin, go to fucking work, dude. Because he <laughs> can't <laughs> light them up. Those dudes ain't got the – and those dudes – and look, Paul Millsap, all-star. Al Horford, all-star. But that's more of a matchup that favors Kevin. Like, when you would get going, they'd be like – Richard, you ready? And it's like, yeah. oh, shit, this fucking <laughs> lefty weirdo, I got to go chase him. <laughs> but it's not like a game. You can't work on what you do because you move. You be, I don't know what, move, like what. You okay. Be doing no, no, no. It's different. It's different. But let me say this. <laughs> did you got, wait, I think, okay. So you're 14. So you did. So you played against Antoine Jameson. Oh, yeah, for I, sure. I watched it. I watched a lot hated, of games. Like that. Dog, like, I hated the weirdest. Though. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So you, so you were new his game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you guys had a similar, like, like when you would score shots or he would hit shots, like, especially Antoine Jameson really kind of fuck with me because I would think he's taking a bad shot, but it was his shot. And then I would look over the bench like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? He's seeing, like, one-legged random runner floaters. Oh. And it's like... And they're running the Princeton offense. So he's dribble handoff. They're coming back, getting <laughs> oh a screen. Then he's shooting these little flick things. And I then hated he was the Princeton. Three. Oh, oh I, I love it. Once you get like, I love it. Who did you play? You had Eddie Jordan. Who'd you have? I had Eddie Jordan my third year. The Princeton didn't work because we had too many like, like dolls that need to run. And mm -hmm. you're trying to like have us out there like cutting and moving and shit. And then you got Fords out with fucking 
Elton and Sam Dellenberg on the on the that don't the, work. The fucking, that don't work. You know what I'm no. saying? You can't put them on the Samuel elbows and say, hey, yeah. say, hey throw, throw a backdoor pass. Boards out reverse. Boards out reverse. That was my shit. There, I used oh, to give that play. Oh, I hated oh. that play. Boards oh. out reverse. Oh, loved yeah. it. That was my that favorite play. It was forwards out. It was God. What was it? High post, low post. That Chan, shit was it, Chan, pull Chan. Ear. Chin was great. Chin was. Act- oh, I so, love chin action. So I eventually action. they took away it as like a system offense, and then it just became they had plays. Play. So right. Chin is a good play, but Chin forwards out like oh, like oh. Chin, Chin is amazing because I mean we played Detroit. That was like that was my first year we played Detroit, and they us up with Chin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's when I first learned. I was like, "Chin!" Like, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just coming to. It. I'm 19 years old, so I'm like, like, like Chin's a monster because you. The, the thing you can't about help. Chin is like, if you do it right and you get going, you can score on the exact same play five different ways and you don't exactly. know how to stop it because you're like okay he hit him on the back cut lob okay the back cut lob we got to take away oh shit that leaves the corner open oh shit they just hit the corner three okay then we got to stay this okay well we're going to help from this oh Such damn the, the, the high pick and roll came and got you because it was a back screen into a high pick and roll so right. now, now you're just, late as the big man yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you went just, to help then you were late and now you got somebody coming downhill but then everyone's in rotation, and then now the strong side dude or the weak side Dennis, dude is there. Yeah, done. Yeah, oh, yeah. Why are you guys making do? basketball seem so complicated? No, it's not. But what we're saying <laughs> is that really simple. There's play certain like so the Princeton, the Princeton, no. the Princeton the offense. Play. That's probably one of the simplest plays ever. Too. Yeah. So the, the the Princeton offense is like the triangle offense for the people that don't know. Princeton has their own basketball offense. It's like famous in the, in, in like the, in basketball. Just like it's just like what is it called? Not motion. What was the what's that? What's the that UCLA. Thing? No, 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 not the UCLA cut, but like the, oh God, what's that thing that everybody runs and I never ran it growing up? It was the motion offense. No, the motion offense. I only ran motion. We never did Princeton. Well, either way. It was UCLA, Richard, you throw it to the side, you get the back screen, down screen. Yeah. I don't don't remember it. I forgot what it was called. Maybe it was the UCLA. I never ran it. But the thing that I'm trying to say is that. Utah ran the UCLA, dog. Yeah, Utah ran that, yeah. But oh. the thing with the Princeton offense is that once they kind of eliminated that, they just took plays from it versus having it be like a triangle, mm-hmm. which was continual. What we used to do, if we got hot with like chin or forwards out, we would run it three, four times in a row. We would score. Then we would not run it again until like five minutes to go in the fourth. We're like, we're going to save this shit. We'll keep that in our back pocket. Come five minutes in the fourth, it's a two, two, a four point game. And y'all didn't figure this out from the second quarter. You haven't seen it since. And then all of a sudden, it, the game would be over. The game would right. be over if you got hot with oh. Chen because it was like, it's a five point game. You ran it like multiple times, they couldn't stop it. Then by the time you go to run it again in the fourth quarter, you're just like, okay, Allie, do you remember that time in Toronto where we scored on like 10 straight possessions running the exact same play? Well, that's Chin, but everybody in the <laughs> league runs it. And that wasn't the play wasn't Chin, but that's how Chin would work, where you could oh, get yeah, six yeah, different shots for five different players running one play. I got you. Yeah, man. yeah um, including like, y'all ran this one help play that was crazy too. There's, uh, the play where you put Brian on the elbow and then you got yeah, that's uh, the play. K Love and yeah, that's the same play. It's like the back. So I would get a back. That was where I would get the backdoor lob. I would get a backdoor so lob. It's just hard because you're trying to figure out which guy to stop because you have because all three can beat you is what you're it's saying. Just, it's in a that, read. In it's that one read. moment, yeah, it's read. Whatever. And again, if you have playmakers like Jason Kidd or LeBron James, you're like, we're gonna put Brian on the elbow. Like he's Drew Brees. If the safety drops, that's open. If the linebacker comes in, that's open. And he would just read and pick you apart. Then it just became like Channing had to knock down the corner three or I had to do this. If I hit that first three and then it's it was just like, then the big, then there was no big help. So me and him, I would just say, hey, welcome to the island. Me and you going to sit out here for another six or seven plays and I'm going to come out and you're going to feel useless. You're not hitting no much- rebounds. We're not, we not doing nothing. How we're going to just is- sit out here. How much did you hate those series or did you love them? Against Cleveland, I mean, with these guys. I mean, I, I love every bit about just playing basketball in general. I love competition, yeah. like, like, cause one thing for sure, like, that's but that's something I've never shied away from. It's comp- competition. That's what's gotten me to this point. 
So, like, I love everything about, like, those series, especially the, the series where we, we took their ass to seven. <laughs> First of all, gone. they weren't there. Channing, you had just left that year. Yeah, they had just last left. Year. That was the most, Yeah, like, that's why it went to seven. Shouldn't have traded. Yeah, they got, rid of the mar- <laughs> and they got rid of the dudes that knew yeah, how to do what stuff. they needed to do. I remember yeah. getting on the bus after, because I, like, those games We're in Indy, one, two, game. I believe. You guys Super blew them out by, like, 30. Each home game. You guys blew one another out. This is a wild what? stat. This is a wild it was stat. Wild. We what? we played 28 quarters. We won 24 of them and lost the series. Yeah. And I remember that getting on the bus after game one or game two. How do you do that? I don't that? know what it was, but I asked Braun. I was like, yo, do you think you guys can beat them? Like, and he w- he was just like, yo, like we gotta figure this shit out. <laughs> he was, I was like, oh my God. Like they I, was, I that, that I was team, stressing out. Look, look, no disrespect to those dudes on the Cavs team because I know them, but that was not a very good Cavs team. That was like, Remember, like that no. was the it, was, it wasn't the it wasn't the be, it wasn't one of the better ones. It wasn't no. one of the better ones. I can't say it. the year before and then like uh prior years were like better teams, obviously, but the year before was definitely a better team. Yeah, that was yeah. was that 17. That was 17 we yeah. played against you guys in the first round. Yeah. I don't know how we won that. that. And, hit a game swept. winner, and he didn't even know. No, it. but we swept. Oh, Remember, oh, like no, Paul George was on. But I was cussing Nate out there. Yo. <laughs> okay, so really, really quickly, really quickly. Because... You should have played me. F- you. Yeah, because then we want to wrap this up so Thad can get Oh, no, I want to ask Thad a question, right? And, and, and I got you know, one more, too. One more, too. You know, you know Paul George. You played with him, and he mm-hmm. played great last night. I did the Dallas game. And you've seen this kind of up and down with him, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's not just up and down because we as players know you're not all going to just have like 30 point games every single night. What is it about Paul that you feel? And I'm not, it's not, it's not, it's just more of a conversation of just like, we saw the success in Indiana. We know how good he is, but it's just like every once in a while, it feels like he gets a little bit in his own way. When it's just like, dude, you could be you you could be the best player on the floor whenever you want. Like, I, I just I, I'm confused as to like, because you played with them, and I, I know he gets a lot of heat, but like the only thing that pisses me off about the heat is like, y'all motherfuckers acting like this ain't a bad dude right now, you know? So like, what is it that like you feel like it's just he's just what is it about his rhythm and flow? I mean, one thing for well, one thing for sure. Once he get into like the rhythm and flow, it's hard. It's you ain't mm-hmm. stopping him. Like no. there's no stopping him, but I think I think like sometimes that rhythm and flow that he does gets in, it takes away from the the team that's around him, right? Like you know they say great players have to be able to make you know his teammates better around him, but mm-hmm. you got another great player standing right next to him. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, yeah. sometimes I think the the this he goes into the shadow of Kawhi, Kawhi. because Kawhi gets so much love, you know, as far as like him winning championships and him always like looking like he's putting the team on his back and because both of them some bad moms, but yeah but I think that when they they come back and like during the season they they limit the guys on their team because they're now coming back from only playing 50 games in a season and then coming back in the in the playoffs and now they got to play 40 and then now you turn that's why you think about like Lou Will and Martrez Hero. You turn Lou Will into a standstill shooter, <laughs> that's which not that's not what he is. You know what I'm saying? And then you get Martrez Harrell, who is your best pick and roll player with Lou Will. Now he becomes null and void. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I think they have to like, well, one, well, you as a Paul, I think he has to add those components to his game to be able to like make, make other people better. Like we know he, he can score maker. with the best. Yeah. yeah, we we know he can score with the best of them. We know he can like go out there and defend the best guys. But, like, when those double teams and triple teams come, we know you can score on them, but, like, you got to, like, trust your teammates a little bit more and and make those guys a little bit better. And not saying he doesn't try, but, you know, I think that, you know, that has to be a game, a part of his game that evolves because, like, one thing about, like, Kawhi on that Toronto team, he willed that team through, but he also had a point guard that made everybody better. Yeah. So his – but and that was the one thing about Kawhi is that he – legitimately is just a great score defender. He is the prototypical old school two mm-hmm. guard, the Ray Allens, the Michael Jordans, the Kobe Bryant. Right. It's like, listen, I'm a fucking shooting guard. My job is to shoot and to guard. Y'all do all the other stuff, right? It's like, 
<laughs> but people don't understand that. Like people don't. don't. He said he says that in the game too. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> yeah, he's he's telling that to somebody. He's like, well, fuck. He's like, I should have shot the motherfuckers. Yeah, if you weren't gonna do shit with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think that's why Rondo is so important on that team. Like PG at his best is a guy that's coming off those stagger screens. Oh, what's up, Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> oh my what's up, Thaddeus? Say what's up to Ali. Say hi. Lord have mercy. Hi. How old what's is this dude? Like 15? His head is as big as mine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, here's my random question. What? You are you're from Mississippi, correct? I'm bald. No, I'm from I'm, I'm from New Orleans. My son? He goes, my son goes, you're bald. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta so, stay off Twitter. You gotta stay off Twitter, man. I'm telling you, this dude, man. So I'm going to switch back to the PG thing. I just think that like when you ask PG to be this guy, he like switches off the part of what makes him elite, right? right. He's a okay. I don't know what his you know, career total or career high is in assists, but it's not 15, 16. It may be nine or 10, where mine <laughs> is seven, right? And that was just a game where I was just like, oh, these fools is hot. Here we go. Right? <laughs> right. But like for me, the Clippers biggest issue is they don't have a point guard. And right. when PG needs to get going, he he puts his head down and goes to his his move that he's been working on. Same with Kawhi. When they bring the ball up the court, everyone stands. And so I, I think he's not getting the right type of he's he's trying to be the best player he can, but he's not being put in situations based on their personnel to be successful. Right. Right. They're like, right. hey, make me a make me a cake. Here, we have uh, we ain't got no flour. You got everything but the, the eggs, the closed. water. <laughs> right. But it, it, what are you doing with that? So it's just like oh, just go play defense and wait for Kawhi. Like both him and Kawhi go, none of these dudes can guard me. So why would I pass? Like Kyrie didn't win un until LeBron was there. Mm -hmm. And Kyrie right. will win, I think, now because James Harden is there. But if you right. notice, James Harden will bring the ball up. He'll throw it to Kyrie. He'll say, give that joint back. He'll get Joe Harris three or four. Kyrie yep. doesn't have to think about anybody else except who's in front, right? right. And then if he, once he get in that rhythm and you play with Tony Parker, uh, uh, Richard, so it's like, it's the same thing. Tony will get a double. He gonna hit you with that quick dump off. But until he gets a double, he like, okay, lay up floater, lay up floater, lay up floater, 911 pass, right? Like. Different yeah, that, I mean that's what that's things. like. Like my first year in Indy, like we had Jeff T. He's a, a good yeah. point guard. He knows how to orchestrate and run the show. And I think that like the first year in Indy, we didn't excel with the team that we had because like we 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 wasn't using our point guard to his full strength. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why that team. That's why Jeff was like, all right, I'm leaving. I'm going somewhere else. He goes to I think Minnesota. And, you know, other guys, they, you know, they dip and we change the whole structure of the team. And then we get Vic and and, and uh, Domas. But then we also had a point, had two point guards, two solid-ass point guards, Corey Joseph and Darren Collison, who know mm -hmm. how to set the table and run the show. So, like, point guards are, are like, a, a, a huge commodity in, in what we try to do as teams. Like, if you don't have a point, it's going to be hard. And I think, like, like with the Bulls now, like our point guard is obviously Kobe White, but he he's a scoring guard, right? So he's still learning how to set the table. That's why shit, you start using me as a defective point guard. I'm up there looking like I'm Braun now and shit, making all these reasons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so so but like definitely I, I think definitely for the Clippers, like they point guard situation, they have to figure that out. Like like Rondo does help them, but to a certain extent, because you're still playing Pat Bev and, and Do you think that's you know, why they made the adjustment Jackson. in Dallas there in game three with Reggie Jackson starting? Do you think that factors? I mean, I, I mean, I think it does. I think it factors because like like when you put Pat Pat Bev out there, like he's out there to defend. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna he's gonna be able to knock down some shots and no, he's you know, not. get you. Get you oh, some. no, 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 Lilla. We're not going to disrespect Pat well, Bev. I'm not right. saying he's a, he's not no, a no, good I'm shooter. Channing. We, I'm not talking to Channing. I'm talking to Channing. Channing's like, yeah, oh, no. Pat Bev is Pat, not a good shooter. No, I'm not saying he's a good shooter, but he can knock yeah. down shots. Rondo's not a good shooter, but he can knock yeah, down some shots knock, for you. Yeah, they can knock down some shots. They're not going to – I ain't like, saying they shoot the motherfuckers at a high clip. First of all, they only going <laughs> to shoot okay. two or three of them motherfuckers a game. <laughs> <laughs> so to try to keep somebody honest. True. 
<laughs> but true, 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 but true, true. but he going to get he going to get your team, he going to get your team some steals, he going to be a, be a pest, but like Luca is not feared by that. He doesn't fear that. You know not what I'm saying? Human. He he That's like he head, that, yeah. like he is exposing. He exposes the Clippers every single year. Yeah. Like <laughs> he exposing the shit out of them. Yo, like, he hates I, he's the Warren one player. So He's looking for that switch. I like, said all. Oh, I said all the time. Here. He, he's <laughs> one of the few players that I never got to play against because I, I retired. Like the year I retired was the year he showed up. I just want to see it because I'd be amazed, Richard, at the way he does it. And I'm watching it, and I'm just like, I've never seen anything like this. Because even when we, even like guys like like LeBron wasn't knocking down. 28 footers when he came in right no. like like he not and, and this is not a comparison it's more of just saying that Luca goes 30 10 and 10 Braun does 30 10 and 10 it's in very different ways but like you're like Luca's shooting you know 32 footers step backs like random shots and I'm like and can't nobody guard this dude I'm like no. and it's like Imagine I don't think like, oh, he gets space and every, like he gets all this crazy ass space you like like how the hell is he getting all this space? He got that like big ass body for a point guard. He knows how to get into the lane. He's throwing fakes and shit like behind the back passes that you didn't even know the guy was there. Like all types of shit. So it's like his basketball IQ along with his skill level is like, crazy, it's insane. And he can probably do this shit for the next twenty years because he he's not playing athletic. Yeah, he's not playing fast. <laughs> he's not he's not fast, but he's quick to go from point A to point B. Right. He sets people up. His setups are some of the best in the league. I played him one time, and my guy, Mike Procopio, he was the assistant coach at that time, the development coach. MP. I was like, how good is this dude, right? Nibbles. I was like, how good is this dude? He goes, Channing, this dude is next level. So I said, all right, let me see. The first play, he's dribbling left-handed. So I'm like, okay, you're going to shoot this left step back. I went to go swipe for he picks it up. He picks it up with his left hand and whizzes this thing to the corner. I said, oh, shit, okay, you you that dude then. Because he wasn't even paying attention to me. He whizzed this thing by my ear like this. Shoot. It's right to the corner on a dot. I said, oh, okay. I said, yeah. you're different. you different. <laughs> you could just pass. Uh, you know, and I'm we're double teaming him. And he's still like, all right, stop it, y'all. He's like, hey, stop. You stop it. Right? You hear a dog barking. He's like, man, shut up. <laughs> assist. Assist. And then he just knows he's never rushed. Dude had 46, nine and nine. He had 46, nine and nine against the biggest, most athletic defenders this league had. The only team that has more length and defenders than them, I, I would probably say is maybe Philly with, with oh, I would say uh, the Lakers. No, not from, they don't have the perimeter defense. I'm saying perimeter Lakers defense. Lakers have one defense in the league though. I said perimeter defense for the 19th time. <laughs> they are the best perimeter <laughs> defensive team in the NBA. I, it's a fit. The defense, defense, defense. I'm not talking defense. about defense. Okay, okay, let me run. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let's let's go. Right. Let's do this. Let's do no, it. Right. Let's go back. Really quick, you really, you get like no. literally like four minutes. No, really, really quickly. Okay, okay. When you look at Ben Simmons, when you look at Matisse Thybul, when you look at who they have on the perimeter, then when you look at Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Morris, Pat Beverly, when you look at the Lakers on the perimeter, you're talking about KCP and Caruso. Stop it. And, Stop, like, it. Stop it. Dennis Stop Schrucker, it. Richard. LeBron James. Stop Stop LeBron it. ain't playing no defense. LeBron ain't playing no defense. Hey, Dennis Schroeder is the Dennis Schroeder is the the, the most 94 impossible, feet. Thank impossible you. Impossible screen that I've ever <laughs> He's the worst. <laughs> 94 He's the feet. Worst. And don't, I love Schroeder. I love do not I think Richard, you're getting caught up in the name. Like I don't know I'm how much Lakers caught, you watch. I'm not getting caught up in the they name. Kawhi Leonard, is a two Caruso time, is solid. Kawhi Leonard is a two-time defensive KCP player of the year. Paul George is a multi-time first team all defender. And Patrick they're getting Beverly, barbecue, all defensive Richard? team. Agreed. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need you to go barbecue check the numbers. The number, I'm gonna need you to go to check Damn, the numbers because the numbers don't lie. I'm and with sorry. that said, Dad, you're amazing. We could keep going on and on. <laughs> that, man, thank um, you, man. But with that said, we want to thank the Wagner family of Camus Vineyards because they Ooh. always supply us with all yes. the most amazing, delicious yes. wine that we always drink on this podcast. Um, and because of them and us, we want to also extend that to you, Thad. So we will be sending you a couple thank bottles you. as well thank to you. with your family. So 
We hope you enjoyed this podcast. It got a little. Uh, it, was, it was great. We gotta do this. We gotta do this again. This again. Oh, yeah. Sure. oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that. That, that, this, that, that. This was gonna happen. You keep watching all these. I know it's tough. Some players. I was one of those when the season was over. I ain't watching no more basketball. I don't give a shit who wins. <laughs> We're going to have you on again, but we need to break down some games. We need to break down some games. We'll bring you on for in, sure. like, the Western Conference Finals, and we'll just be like, yo. We should totally. It'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be fun, man. No, for sure. We No, I'll I, I watch the game. I've been watching. So, yeah, so I turned maybe, the shit off. Maybe <clears throat> we could uh, – we like to do Twitter spaces every once in a while. We could bring you in and be a host with us. Roger does Twitter. For sure. We do games. For sure. Have players on, et cetera. So, cool. Awesome. You're great. Man, Thank man. You. Appreciate you, Thad. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, Road Trippin' fam. We are excited to let you know that Road Trippin' is proud to be presented by FanDuel. Never played NBA Daily Fantasy on FanDuel before? Well, check this out. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Why should you play on FanDuel NBA? Well, for one, it is easy to use when it comes to their app. What's not to love about that? But also, for example, they offer different and unique contests across sports in relation to your skill level. Oh yeah, and get this, you can play for big prizes, single game contests for the biggest national matches, and enter contests for as low as five cents. That's right, five cents. Simply incredible. So again, let's recap. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Enter URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping to play now and get your deposit bonus. That's URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping so they know we sent you. FanDuel, more ways to win.